Hello and welcome to day three of uh, the Short Locker, uh, which strangely enough coincided with uh, day three of Arch Madness. I yeah. don't know how that worked I out. I noticed that. I don't yeah. know. That's pretty good planning on our part. Yeah, yeah. yeah I would say. I'm Joaquin Kerrig. This is uh, Joe Flaherty. It was good enough for you to make it here today. Thanks. Glad to be yeah. here. Good, good, good. <laughs> All right. So we today was semifinals day. So we had two games on our slate. Um, one was close. The other one was not. Uh, mm. I'll let you determine which one was which. Uh, let's roll the highlights. First game on the docket, Missouri State and Wichita State. John Wood nominee Klee Anthony early pumping up his fellow Shockers. Now the Golden Bears hung around early, or at least tried to. Noreen Williams takes it to the rim right here to cut the deficit to one. But wise man once said, do or do not, there is no trying. Missouri State, they did not. Wichita State, well they did. And they did some more. And continued to do so, not four, not five. But six consecutive times during a stretch in the half, the tally was eight by half, three of which came from Early, who had 14. Austin Ruder, yesterday's hero, today's goat, managed just four. In the second half we go, Early making things a little bit easier on his shooting percentage with that oop right there. Later in the half, Williams here, Early there. That's not going in. Wichita stayed up 30 late. Time to, re to relax, right? Wrong. Baker drives for the loose ball. Van Vliet calls a timeout to save his possession. Early saving his best for the last. As Wichita State tames the Bears, winning 67 to 42. Early had a game high 20 points. Kind of gave us a little bit more room to work inside, and they were trying to be physical inside. So, luckily, we got some shots to drop. You know, for about five minutes, it looked like Missouri State was gonna was gonna hang tough, but. <laughs> Wow. Best five minutes of their life. Yeah, because that game got out of hand very quickly. So fast. What, what, why is Wichita State at such a higher level than, than all these other tournaments? I mean, so far? just from a spectator's point, point of view, you look at the games going on and you look at when Wichita State is involved, they are clearly at a different caliber. And that is, I think that stems from not only the confidence the team has in itself, but the confidence each player on the floor has in each other. And that's something that really comes through when you see Wichita State play. They're not really worried about what play just happened, good or bad. They're going to attack and execute on each individual play, and they're supremely confident. It's almost eerie to the point where there's like incredibly, I don't want to say nonchalant because that has a negative con connotation, but they're just so calm and collected in the way they carry themselves. They'll get into their half-court set. They're even really good in transition, but they just pick and choose whatever they want to do. They don't make mistakes. They don't beat themselves. And we saw the result of that today. Yeah, I and mean, they clearly have no conscience, like you were saying about, they just come in, take care of business. I mean, they were up 30 points in the second half. Right. Um, there, was a play, there was a loose ball mm -hmm. that uh, Baker went after, right. John Baker went after, and Van Vliet, Van Vliet comes over and calls timeout to prevent them from calling, from having a turnover. The game, it was it was a play that wasn't going to make much of a difference in, in the game. Right. But he but they still I mean they do all the little things. They when you're the things. when you have a, a margin like that, the ability to keep your foot on the gas and not let the you see it so often, especially with college kids where they get a, a bit of success and it kind of gets to their heads and they kind of you know maybe want to take their foot off the gas pedal a little bit, especially when they open up a lead that big. But you, then you got. Ron Baker diving out of bounds just to save possession, and the team is already up that much in the closing minutes. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there's just so much to be said. There's not enough adjectives. Yeah. The, the first game that they played yesterday, uh, the scoring was very even. Tomorrow, today, Anthony, it was Anthony earlier's game today. Right. He had 20 points, uh, 8 of 13, 3 of 6 from behind the arc. I mean, it seemed like he was, he was playing at a, a higher level today. It usually does come a bit from uh, everywhere. And, and to be fair, I mean, Tikal did have, Tikal Cotton did have a pretty nice game. He had 13 points. But, um, I mean, early is, it's, it was announced earlier today, <laughs> ironically earlier, um, that he was a Wooden Award finalist. Um, I mean, he is their guy, per se, and he really showed why today. I mean, he had it, like you said, from three-point range early. He had one of the, there was an incredible stretch where they had probably six threes in a row, really opened things up, and he kind of set the tone there. He also, I mean, is great in transition. We saw, I mean, kids got bounced for days. And just as much as early showed up, I mean, Missouri State's guy, Austin Reuter, I mean, I don't know if it was freshman nerves or what, or the situation just finally sunk in for him, but he was Casper the Ghost today. He was gone. He had four points. He missed five shots. He was ice cold from three. I mean, it's, he's going to be back. He's going to have another chance to 
put his name up in, in good standing with Missouri State in the tournament, but today was not his day. Yeah, I mean, from what I've seen of Ruder so far, I, I would say that he's a very raw player. I would say he's he's got that three-point shooting ability, right. but I haven't seen much else. And you, and a team like Wichita State can shut down a guy that can shoot from behind arc. That's the only thing he can do. Right, exactly. Their, their ability to take away your best skill and force you to beat them otherwise is probably another reason why they're just... Well, and then they beat them at Ruder's own game. I mean, they were... 8 of 10 in the first half from behind the arc. That's got to be demoralizing yeah. to know that that's, your, that that's your thing and they're doing it better than you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that was the first game on the slate. They're going to play the winner of our second game of the day, which was <laughs> Indiana State versus Southern Illinois. Let me say right now, good luck, Indiana State. <laughs> yeah, but uh, first they had to play Southern Illinois, which we will take a look at now. Second semifinal game featured a matchup of two senior stars, Desmar Jackson of the Salukis and Jake Odom of the Sycamores. Which one would be going home for good? Neither player made much of a case for staying the first half. Shot clock didn't make much of a case either. Went out during warm-ups and stayed off for the game. Here's Odom's only basket of the entire half. Someone had to step up for SIU as well, and it was Jalen Pendleton right here with the slay-up. Tyler Smith-Peters made his case as well, hitting the three to put them ahead. Pendleton led the way with eight, Smith-Peters added six. Meanwhile, Odom just couldn't get it going, but the second half was a different story. SIU couldn't keep the scrappy Odom out of the paint. The senior guard scored seven points early in the half to put ISU up 41-33, hitting the tough floater right here. Nice shot. In the final minutes, Anthony Bean hits the tray to close the gap to four. Shortly after, Jackson with the Euro making the first field goal of the night, cutting the lead down to two. Now down three in the closing seconds, Jackson heaves up a prayer that would not be answered tonight. ISU holds on for the 62-59 victory. Odom exploded for 17 in the second half. Next up, Wichita State. We're going to give it everything we have, and if it's not good enough, they go into the tournament undefeated with a great chance to, to win the whole thing. Uh, if it's good enough, we're going to get in there and do something too. Losing coach Barry Hinson had some choice words about the shot clock. It is amazing to me that you're playing in a building that hosts the National Hockey League and you can't have a shot clock that works. That's not the Missouri Valley Conference's fault. That's not. It's the building's fault. And, uh, but it didn't have an effect on the game. But the professionalism of that at this level, that's, there's no excuse for that. None. So, Sorry. I've had my ass eat out this year. You know what? Shot clock guys, you get your ass eat out today because that's, that's not right. And it's not the Valley's fault. So unfortunately, Southern Illinois didn't quite have enough to uh, win this game today. Were you, on the first question, were you as fired up as the coach was about the shot clock not working today for the second game? I mean, I'm not going to say I was fired up as much as he was, but he did make a good point. Uh, it's not on the Valley, it's on the Scott Trade Center, and they're on national TV tomorrow, so they should be at a level. They should be at a level of competency where they can, you know, get the shot clock and the game clock working. So right. that struck me as odd, but it wasn't exactly, you know, something to get fired up and angry about like yeah. uh, Southern Illinois coach did. Do you think his overreaction was uh, was a little much? I think a little bit of it had to do with his frustration of the game, mm -hmm. and he even caught himself at the end. Uh, trying not to go into another rant like he had against um, Murray State, was it? Yeah. And so I, I think that was just his way of, you know, ranting a little bit about the game. Uh, but it really didn't make that much of a difference. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the yeah, game. Um, let's, talk about, let's talk about Jake Odom. He had a very, very quiet first half, yeah. um, which, which gave Southern Illinois the opportunity to uh, stay in this game, I would say. Um, but in the second half, he woke up. Yeah, you know, fourteen points in the second half. Well, that was the big thing. What happened? The well, the two big, the two big names from both Southern Illinois and Indiana State had pretty low key first halves. Mm. Uh, Desmar Jackson of Southern Illinois was 0 for four, 0 for one from three point, uh, but he was three for four from the free throw line. So he only had three points in the first half. Odom, he was just about as bad. He was one of two from the floor with one of three from field goal or from uh, the line. So, like, both of them had very uninspiring first-half performances. In the second half, Odom played like he wanted to win. He finished the game with 20 points, 5 boards, 10 of 15 free-throw shooting. He got to the line a lot. Yeah. And that was, I think that was a huge part of this game, is that he was able to drive the lane, pick up the fouls, get to the line, and get points for, 
his team. Jackson, on the other hand, Desmar Jackson, vanished. I didn't see it. He made one basket, and he was one of ten for the day. Six of eight from the line. His eight point, six of his eight points all came from free throws. And he had a chance, he had a chance to tie the game at the end. He had the ball in his hand, and he took a bad three-point shot, and that's what cost him the game, cost him a chance at overtime. So o Odom rose to the occasion while Jackson just kind of fell into the shadows. Yeah, Coach, Coach griped a little bit about this, but do you think Jake Odom, him getting to the free throw line 15 times in the game, do you think that was just him being aggressive, or do you think that was they were, they were making a lot of calls, a lot of calls in his favor? I mean, you can call that on any game. It, it, it's not something specific. It didn't change the outcome. Uh, Southern Illinois missed their fair share of free throws. If they had made even one free throw more than they did, they only shot like 64% from the line. If they had made one more free throw, then they could go for that last shot. They only would need a two to tie. I, I think that it didn't make a change in the outcome. Yeah. I mean, but you know what? I mean, Jackson didn't show up today. But they did have two other players that, that carried the slack. And yeah, Smith, absolutely. Smith, Peters, and Bean. Talk yep. about a little bit about how they played today. Uh, well, both of them were really great. Both finished in double-digit scoring. Smith, Peters had 13. Bean had 16. And Bean's an underclassman. He's, what, a freshman, sophomore? He's a, Something young, like that, yeah. he's a young guy, so he's going to be back. And for him to come out to his first or second Arch Madness tournament, make a couple plays, do really well, get 16 points in a game where, you know, those should-be star is failing away. For him to step it up, that, that shows a lot about his character and a lot about the player that he is becoming and will look to continue to become as he becomes an upperclassman. Mm -hmm. Well, the Southern Illinois did not have quite enough to uh, advance to the finals. Not quite. So the matchup will be Wichita State versus Indiana State. It's tomorrow. almost like it was planned beforehand. The number one seed, the number two seed, they're the best two teams in the conference. That's what it's going to come down to. And honestly, I don't see anybody beating Wichita State right now. Do you think it's going to be a game? Even? It'll be a game. Okay. Um, when, when, Indiana, when Wichita came and played Indiana State in Terre Haute, it was a four-point game. So it was close. It was a good game. And both, fans are gonna have, both teams are going to have their fan bases out there. So it's going to be loud. It's going to be a great game. It's going to be a great atmosphere. Yeah. And I, I see Wichita State winning it. Uh, but it's not going to be you know, a 20-point blowout like we saw today. Right. Uh, but Wichita State wins it. Wichita State gets the uh, number one seed, maybe even the number one overall seed, depending on how Florida does in their conference right. tournament. Uh, Southern Illinois head coach actually had some very nice words about Wichita State. He said that it doesn't matter whether or not they win or lose tomorrow. They should be a number one seed. So he's happy to play in the Valley. I think we're all really happy to play with that kind of talent. And... Uh, I mean, if it gets to it, best of luck to them in the tournament. Yes, sir. Well, that'll do it for us here in St. Louis for day three. It was another two big games, and tomorrow we have a huge, huge matchup between Wichita State and Indiana State at uh, 1 o'clock. Um, so tune in to CBS. It's going to be on national television, so that should be really exciting. And then afterwards, tune in to uh, get some recap from, from here, us here at the Short Locker. Um, for Nick Amatangelo, Joe Flaherty, I'm Joaquin Carey. Have a wonderful night. <laughs>